Kembali di Newsline Bisnis, pemirsa pandemi COVID-19 telah menekan perekonomian dan kelangsungan bisnis. Untuk dapat bertahan, inovasi dan transformasi bisnis sangat diperlukan di tengah ketidakpastian akibat COVID-19. Berikut wawancara Mercy Wijaya dengan Rachel Barger, Presiden and Managing Director Sub Southeast Asia, tentang apa yang harus dilakukan oleh pelaku usaha saat pandemi COVID-19. Mari kita simak. Pemirsa saat ini ekonomi global sedang menghadapi tekanan yang luar biasa akibat pandemi COVID-19. Lalu strategi apa yang perlu dilakukan oleh pelaku usaha dan juga perusahaan supaya dapat bertahan, bahkan menang dalam persaingan global untuk bisa pulih terlebih dahulu. Kita akan membahas strategi ini selengkapnya bersama dengan Presiden dan juga Managing Director SAP Southeast Asia, Rachel Barger. Rachel, thank you for your time with us today. Yes. And Rachel, so during this COVID-19 pandemic, we know that lockdowns and also policy about restrictions has made businesses suffer. Then how can businesses here in Indonesia can survive in the middle of this huge uncertainty? Very good question. And it's something we think a lot about at SAP. And actually, over the last week, we've had a large digital event with our customers called Forward Together. And as part of the registration for that event, we asked over 6,500 business leaders to talk with us about their impressions around the economy and how they're going to be focusing on the future. And what was very interesting is that over 60% of these organizations said that they saw differences in their customers' buying patterns and behaviors. But even despite that, there were still 40% of businesses that said they were just going to wait and see what happened. And that held true, not just across Southeast Asia, but also in Indonesia. Those were the same percentages. And I think that if organizations decide to wait and see and, and think that things, they're just going to wait until things get better, they actually, are in a situation where they are going to really struggle to thrive and survive. And what our suggestion is, is that now, now is the time to innovate and transform. Now is the time to understand how your customers are looking at things differently. New routes to market, supply chains have been disrupted, creating new opportunities for businesses to create new customer relationships. Our employees have been challenged with working from home, but that's actually an opportunity to listen to them and see how we can transform their work to help them to be even more productive. So how can we do such a transformation immediately, Rachel? And do we have the supporting, a supporting environment and also policy to do it? I think we do. And I think I would offer three big ways that we can focus on this. First is with intelligent technologies. By becoming an intelligent enterprise, what that allows us to do is see across our businesses better so that we can understand our business better and make better decisions and predict future performance better. The second that I'd suggest is using technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Why that is helpful is that things are changing very rapidly right now. And taking on a, a small innovation like that can help you better plan and predict for the future. And then the third, I would say, is I know that productivity is a big focus in Indonesia right now. And taking on quick initiatives like robotic process automation can actually allow you to automate and remove manual tasks and make your employees more productive so they can focus on value add activities and actually make them a lot happier. And I'd, I'd use an example actually from, from Thailand, a company called Bangkok Glass. And they took a very simple innovation using robotic process automation and took a, a task that took many days to complete in, in provisioning laptops for work at home employees. And they dramatically reduced the time which made everyone more productive, but it actually made their employees much happier and much, able to, much more able to do their work. And so that's an example. You can start small, but still make a really big impact. Okay, Rachel, in your perspective, which sectors in Indonesia is urgently need the transformation right now? 
Very good question. I'd really focus on consumer products. That's a real area where you have new interactions with your customers and you have a supply chain which may be being disrupted due to global trends. And I think by focusing again, innovating and transforming in simple ways, focusing on omni-channel, okay? By being where your, your, your customers want you to be. I think that Indonesia is an amazing country. If you think about the number of unicorns that exist in Indonesia, now a decacorn that we're very proud to call our customer in Gojak, Indonesians are ready to be digital. We need to meet them there. We need to empower our businesses to go omni-channel, to listen to their customers and create immersive experiences to digitally engage. And then the third piece that I'd say is that in the supply chain, when you make a promise, when you create an order with a customer, when you promise something online, you have to be able to deliver it or else it doesn't matter. And that's an area where I see, I've seen a lot of small medium enterprises maybe a little bit lost. They so focus on the front end that they forget the entire process and how important delivering on the promise is by making sure their supply chains are resilient, agile, efficient, and on time. And so whether it's consumer products where there's a lot of customer interaction, we work a lot with mining, oil and gas, natural resources, to create opportunities for sustainability while still having profits and, and resiliency. And I think those are a few of the areas, but I think it goes across manufacturing, even, even a bank. And, and I think that the other thing that's really interesting about Indonesia is that if you look at some of the survey results, there was a bit more interest in taking action. So if I compared to say the Philippines or if I compared to Singapore, Indonesian companies understood the need to innovate and transform, to reset for the rebound. And I think Indonesia, yes, growth will not be as high as, as we would like this year. And I, there's some ADB st statistics around that. Still about, I think, 3%, 3.5% growth. Mm -hmm. But next year, they're expecting significantly more growth. And that's what we mean by reset for the rebound. If we're not ready for this, this time with our customers, if we haven't listened to them and understood what they're looking for, if we haven't understood our businesses and built flexibility and agility in them, then we're not going to be prepared when the time is now to really take charge of the opportunity. Okay, Rachel, thank you so much for your time. We also hope an innovation, transformation, and also a speed recovery for our businesses in Indonesia. Thank you for your time with us. Yeah, from your thank you for your time. Wishing you the best. Thank you so much. From your thank you. 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 Thank you.